Hey, welcome back to my studio. If you're new here, my name's Morgan and I make all things party and event. And today I wanna to show you how to put together this balloon cauldron. It's a wonderful addition for any fall or Halloween themed parties and it comes together super quickly. So follow along and I'll show you how to make it. To start off, I'm gonna inflate the most important balloon in this project and that's the 36 inch black balloon which makes up the body of the cauldron. Now I'm gonna fully inflate this until it's nice and round and it's no longer pointy on the end like you can see there. Once I've got it fully inflated, I'm then gonna let a little bit of air out of it and press down on it so it's a nice round shape and not so much of a pear shape. I'm gonna tie off this giant balloon with an empty 260. So I'm gonna hold that 260 with my thumb and then stretch out one of the tails really taut and wrap it around the nozzle of the 36 inch a couple times before tying it in a double knot. In doing it this way, we're less likely to create a tear in the giant balloon and it gives us the tails of this 260 to tie into the feet of the cauldron later. Next, I'm going to make the rim of the cauldron using this black 260 and a hand pump. Now, I'm going to inflate this to nine pumps of air or until there's just about a half inch of the balloon left uninflated on the end. I'm going to tie that off and then tie the nozzle and the end of the balloon together so I have a ring. I'm going to set this piece aside for now and let's start working on the feet of this cauldron. The feet are made up of four 11 inch black balloons. I'm going to inflate these fully and then using my balloon sizer box, put that balloon against my seven inch hole and slowly let air out of it until it just fits through. This means my balloon is seven inches, so I'm just going to tie that off and repeat that with my other balloons. So I've got four of these in total. I'm going to tie two of those seven inch balloons and tie them together into a pair by wrapping the nozzles around twice and tying them in a simple knot. Once I've got the pair made, I'm going to make a second pair in the exact same way and then bring the two of those together so that the nozzles touch and then twist one balloon from each pair around each other and that will lock them into a quad. The entire arrangement is going to sit on top of these four balloons and to help make it more stable, I have filled one more 11 inch black balloon with water until it's about the size of a tennis ball and I'm going to tie that water balloon to one of the nozzles from the quad. Then when I set this quad down on the ground, I'll make sure that the water balloon is facing downwards. This is going to give our arrangement a lot of stability and it'll be less likely to tip over. Next, I'm going to tie the 36 inch balloon to the feet using those 260 tails that we tied onto it earlier. So I'm going to set the balloon nozzle side down on top of the quad and then stretching out those two 260 ends, I'm going to wrap those tails around a couple of the balloons in the base before tying them together in a double knot. Whatever tail is remaining after the knot, just take a pair of scissors and cut away those ends. From this point on in the project, everything I'll be attaching to the top of this cauldron will be secured in place using glue dashes. Now you could also use glue dots or balloon tape as well, but the first thing I'm gonna stick on is the ring that we made earlier, and it'll naturally wanna be a teardrop shape. So you're gonna have to press it into a circle and align it to the very top of the balloon so everything looks nice and symmetrical. While you're holding that in place, put one of your glue dashes on the underside of that 260 between it and the 36 inch balloon. Once you've got it on, remove the paper backing and stick it directly to that 36 incher. Then repeat this in three or four spots so that ring is a nice circular shape on top of our balloon. With the body of our cauldron complete, we now need to concoct something witchy to come boiling out of the top. And I've opted to use lime green and yellow five inch balloons, and I'm double stuffing some of those so that the green is inside the yellow. That will give me three shades for my witchy concoction. Now to double stuff balloons, you're gonna take one of your five inch balloons and stretch it either over the end of a balloon stick or a chopstick, something that's narrow but not pointy on the end. Then you're gonna slide one of your yellow balloons right over the top of that using the stick to press the two together. Now I'm gonna have a bunch of these ready to go and I'm going to inflate all of my five inch balloons to either one pump, two pump, or three pumps of air. The amount of air you put into the balloons isn't super critical. What's important is that they're all nice and round because that's what will give the illusion of them being bubbly. If you overinflate these balloons, they'll be more of a pear shape instead of those round bubbles. In total, I inflated about 50 balloons with the majority of those inflated to one pump of air because having lots of small bubbles helps us give a really full look and there's less gaps in the overall bubbly design. I'm gonna start filling that inner ring of the cauldron with some of my larger balloons. And to make that process go quicker, I'm gonna tie those into pairs first before sticking them down to the top of my 36 inch balloon. My main priority with this first layer of balloons is getting them in as densely as possible inside that ring. I don't wanna have lots of gaps, if possible, between these balloons. So before I stick anything down, I always hold it in the place where I think it should go to see if it's gonna work out before I've stuck it down. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'll I'll then remove the paper backing and stick it where I think it needs to go. Also, don't forget to stick a balloon over where we tied the 260 ends together. We want to make sure we hide that gap so it keeps the illusion alive. 
For all my remaining balloons, I'm going to cut the nozzle off of that balloon and put a glue dash right near where the nozzle was. That means wherever I stick these bubbles down, the nozzle is most likely to be hidden. So now anywhere you see a gap or you need to hide nozzles from the previous layer, that's where you're going to start sticking in all of these small balloons. Once you've covered up all those gaps, you can then start thinking artistically. Where do you want your pot to start bubbling? Like on this side, I want my pot to bubble over. So I'm going to drape a bunch of balloons on this side so it looks like it's overflowing over here. I also want to make sure I'm mixing up my colors so I don't have too many of one shade in all one spot. And the colors are so limitless on a project like this. I've gone for the green look, but pastels are super popular. You could do this in pinks or lavenders. You could go with dark purples or even those eyeball balloons. The sky's the limit when it comes to your creativity on this project, and I hope you'll run with it. If you're planning to do a party where the room is really dark, you could also put some puck or fairy lights down underneath these balloons so it looks like this is glowing. I hope you're inspired by today's project and give this one a try. I love when a simple balloon project like this can make a huge impact in a party or event space without a lot of work involved. If you enjoyed this project, hit that like button, subscribe below, and don't forget to check out our Patreon group if you'd like to up your party planning game. Until the next time, you can check out some of my other videos over here. And remember, stay creative, everybody. Bye!